Mm-hmm. And I think like you see in the in France, you know, this is a movement that is totally independent of any uh, left wing group or NGO or, or any anything. Right. This mm-hmm. is just something spontaneous. These guys are pissed off and they put on yellow vests and they start breaking things and lighting mm-hmm. fires. And that's mm-hmm. essentially going to be how you're going to see the the. The the because what's happening now is that the the elites of the world, the Merkels, the Macrons, the um, the Theresa Mays, these figures, these neoliberal guardians, are afraid, frankly, because their 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 populations are very angry at them, and the people they govern don't feel like they're represented in these governments anymore, and that there's nothing they can do. Like, you know, once you get to the point. Where you vote for something like the wall with Donald Trump and you don't get it, that's when you start considering options that aren't voting. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem all of these figures in Europe and and soon in America are starting to have. Yeah. And that's also why the system is coming so hard at us from every direction. Basically, in every country, you're seeing um, a smackdown on nationalism, nationalist ideas. Uh, that's why you have the United Nations on overdrive with their non-binding contracts of, uh, you know, we media should be punished if they do this and that, if they do, if they write things critical about mass immigration and people should be punished if they criticize immigrants. Uh, that's why you have the European Union and all kind of institutions like really, really fighting back hard right now. Uh, mm. I mean, what's that? What's that? That famous quote? It says, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you. Yeah, and then you win. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think we're at the third stage now. Finally. I, mean, I, I remember they used to, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. Like, I've been, I've been engaged in politics for, like, almost a decade. And I remember that before, it was a challenge to even get anyone to listen to these ideas. Mm-hmm. Then... After, you know, probably around 2015 and 16, people were treating this stuff like it was a joke. They're like, oh, they're just joking. It's just a kid. They're kidding. Look at them. They're nerds. They're incels. They're pathetic. They're, they live in their basement, in their mother's basement. And now it's, okay, we have to do – this is an emergency. We have to do something to shut these people up. So, I mean, I'm sure you guys – and have you guys noticed a major difference in, in how – the government treats you. I know the oh, NRM yeah. has been around for a long time. Mm. Well, we, we were just banned in Finland. Well, uh, last latest today, we had our minister of interior basically saying that he is very happy about the court of appeals upholding the district court's ban on us in Finland. Uh, but he, he, he kind of showed his cards when he said um, that this means that uh, national socialism in any form will be become banned in Finland if if um, the Supreme Court decides to uphold the, the Court of Appeals, which basically is completely contradictory to our constitution. Uh, so it, it was a very interesting slip from him to to say that. So it's it's very clear that the government is is pushing for a complete ban of national socialism at least. Uh, yeah, and I guess, how that's gonna affect I, us, I don't know, but yeah, I can say from well, the well, Swedish perspective as well. From yeah. 2017, we had our own little Charlottesville in Gothenburg that you might have caught, mm-hmm. Striker. Uh, yeah, before that was held, uh, everything was fine. You know, discussing the route and all the demonstration details were fine with the dialogue with the police. Then we had a visit from the Jewish World. Uh, Congress, is it called yeah. that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. World Jewish Congress. Yeah, we had a Ronald visit from Lauder. them, and they got a a visit, uh, like an audience with our interior minister, just like that, you know, <laughs> spontaneous. Oh, yeah. And he said that you need to work on your hate speech laws because you can't have Nazis marching on your streets. That's not okay. <laughs> and he said in an interview then with the state media, our interior minister is that, yeah, we're going to look over our hate speech laws. And what you're seeing now, a year later, over a year later, actually in January, uh, activists in the dozens are going to court for what we did in Gothenburg in 2017. 
And that's when they're going to push the fact that we're not allowed to organize, we're not allowed to use our symbol, we're not allowed to have flags, everything like that. All the details are going to get banned so that you can, in effect, not even exist as an organization. I remember in 2013, maybe, uh, following the visit from the same organization, the World Jewish Congress, mm -hmm. they visited Greece uh, after the Golden Dawn had a, a rally, they had this rally where they had like 50 or 60,000 people marching mm -hmm. for the Golden Dawn. And the World Jewish Congress came in, and that's when the problem started for them. Suddenly, the constitutional rights that they had used to defend their civil liberties and right to practice politics, those were being pulled away. And then they started getting uh, these these ridiculous things. They have like some charge where they, they claim they, they had a, a criminal conspiracy to murder some Wigger rapper, uh, which is just laughable. And that, that trial is still going on. So it's essentially just to, 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 to keep these, these, these ideas down. And it's definitely something you can correlate. Whenever you get a visit, whenever your country gets a visit from the World Jewish Congress, the political crackdown follows. Yeah. That, that's that's the, the, the general rule. Yeah, that's, that's what we're seeing. And uh, we're not surprised that all these measures will be taken against us and it will make us stronger because... Yeah, no, it's no, the antibodies. Yeah, right. the no, normal people aren't going through all of this. You know, only the hardest, the strongest, the people of the strongest will will go through this and become even stronger so that they can resist this stuff for the weaker people. So it's yeah. Uh, I'm glad you guys have the right idea because here in the in the Anglo-Saxon countries, when this stuff when this stuff starts to happen, people take a defensive posture rather mm -hmm. than an offensive one. Yeah. But in, in in Germanic countries, especially ones where you guys practice national socialism, uh, the the idea is attack, offense, mm -hmm. forward, yes. positive, positive politics rather than negative defensive ones exactly right? so you should only state the things as they are and then go forward you know face reality and go forward with what you have so oh yeah that that's something that's a famous uh, don Colaccio quote where he says you know you can accept reality you can reject reality but at the end of the day it's still going to be there so yeah. you can either eagerly embrace it and engage with it or uh, you know, keep getting destroyed because, you know, the, the, the key to understanding this stuff is that if you're not fighting the system, they're fighting you. Yeah. So the best defense is always going to be offense. Now, of course, we all believe in, in the law and obeying the law within, within reasonable capacity, but you know, it's getting to a point where the liberal power structure in all of the world, especially the white countries is getting more and more oppressive and tyrannical. Why? Because they fear their own people. Hmm. Merkel fears the German people. Theresa May fears the British people. Uh, the, the, the Swedish government fears the Swedish people. So what, what they're doing to you guys is, in effect, uh, the, the government in Sweden understands that there's a popular raising of consciousness in terms of the immigration problem, the, the, uh, the, the economic problem, and, and other issues like that. So the goyim increasingly know. So right now in Sweden, the, the key is to prevent that, that consciousness from becoming political will, to keep it separate from you guys as a vehicle of that political will. And that is the challenge they have right now. But if you actually look at governments that become repressive at this stage in the game, it's always something that ends up failing. Hmm. Because once an idea's time has come, there's nothing you can do about it. 